Hello class, welcome to Understanding the Self Subject. Today, we're going to discuss Lesson 2 of Chapter 1, Sociological Perspective of the Self. But before we proceed with the discussion, allow me to tell a story. A short story that is related with the lesson today. Let's call it as what monkeys can teach us about human behavior. Actually, this story that I'm going to tell you is real experiment that was conducted and it involved 5 monkeys, a ladder, and a banana. Okay, so the five monkeys experiment. Allow me to read. A group of scientists place five monkeys in a cage and in the middle, a ladder with bananas on top. So basically here, merong limang monkeys. And then sa gitna, naglagay ang mga scientists ng isang hagdan. Sa tuktok ng hagdan, may saging. Every time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soak the rest of the monkeys with cold water. So every time na may mag attempt na kumuha nung saging dun sa may hagdan, yung apat na monkeys na nasa baba binabasa ng mga scientists na malamig na tubig. After a while, every time a monkey went up the ladder, the others beat up the one on the ladder. So basically here, tuwing merong isang monkey na aakyat dun sa ladder para kunin, yung saging, binubugbog siya nung apat pa na monkey. Okay? After some time, no monkey dared to go up the ladder regardless of the temptation. So, wala nang naglakas loob na kunin pa yung saging kasi every time na may kukuha, binabasa sila. Okay? And then ngayon, kung sino yung mag attempt akong mga, yun naman yung binubugbog nung apat na monkey. Okay? Scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys. The first thing this new monkey did was to go up the ladder. Immediately, the other monkeys beat him up. So, ang ginawa ng mga scientists, tinanggal nila yung isang monkey. Pinalitan nila ng bago. Of course, itong bagong monkey, nag-attempt na kunin yung saging dun sa may ladder. Okay? Siyempre, hindi niya pa nalalaman. Ngayon, nung umakyat siya dun, binugbog siya nung apat na monkeys, yung mga lumang monkeys na nauna kanina okay so after several beatings the new member learned not to climb the ladder even though it never knew why so hindi na nag-attempt ulit etong si new monkey na kunin yung saging kasi nga binubugbog siya nung apat pa na monkeys a second monkey was substituted and the same occurred okay so napalitan na naman yung isang monkey okay so may bago na namang monkey the first monkey participated on the beating for the second monkey. Okay, so sumali na rin yung, yung kaninang monkey, yung bagong dating. Binugbog niya na rin si second monkey na bagong palit. Okay, a third monkey was changed and the same was repeated. So basically, nauulit lang yung process. The fourth was substituted and the beating was repeated. And finally, the fifth monkey was replaced. But take note, hindi na sila binabasa dito ng mga scientists ng cold water. Pero yung practice nila na pambubugbog, sa isang monkey na umaakyat dun sa agdan para kunin yung saging, pinapractice pa rin nila. Okay? Yun yung nagiging behavior nila. What was left was a group of five monkeys that even though never received a cold shower, continued to beat up any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder. So, ang nangyari ngayon, kahit sino monkey ang aakyat dun para kunin yung saging, automatic bubugbogin na nila, ibibit na nila. Okay? Kahit na wala na yung cold water na binubuhos sa kanila. Ngayon, kung may chance na pwede nating tanungin itong mga monkeys na to, okay, kung bakit nila binubugbog yung umaakyat dun sa ladder para kunin yung saging, for sure ito ang sasagutin nila. I don't know. That's how things are done here. Okay? So basically here, napapasa yung behavior. Okay? Does this sound familiar? Have you ever experienced the same thing? Of course, hindi yung nabugpog, okay? May mga bagay bang itinuro sa atin pero hindi natin alam kung bakit? At ano yung purpose? Usually, we can observe this sa mga lumang paniniwala at mga pamahiin. For example, sa mga Pilipino, bawal daw magpa-picture yung tatlong tao dahil daw mamamatay daw yung isa. Okay, may mga ganong paniniwala. Ano pa? Hindi raw dapat magwalis kapag may patay sa bahay. What else? Tuwing New Year, kailangan daw tumalon para tumangkad. Okay. 
So, at marami pang iba na paniniwala ng mga Pilipino, are we following these beliefs without really knowing the reasons why? That's the purpose of our discussion today. Kaya ako kinuwento ito. Okay? Since we're talking about sociological perspective, we have to define sociology. What do we mean by sociology? Sociology is a social science that studies human societies, their interactions, and the processes that preserve and change them. So, sociology comes from the Latin word socius, which means companion, and the Greek word logos, meaning the study of. So, basically, sociology literally means the study of companionship. Okay? Sa sociology, inaaral dito yung lipunan or yung society at yung ugnayan ng tao, okay, yung interaction nila with the society. So, who are the people involved in sociological perspective of the self? So, the person we have here is Charles Cooley. Charles Cooley is perhaps best known for his concept of the looking glass self, which is the concept that a person's self grows out of society's interpersonal interactions and the perceptions of others. The concept of the looking glass self is undoubtedly as famous and is known and accepted by most psychologists and sociologists today. The term looking glass self was first used by Cooley in his work Human Nature and the Social Order in 1902. So what do we mean by the looking glass self? Take note, the looking glass self is the process by which people evaluate themselves based on how others see them. Sabi sa looking glass self, may notion na yung self mo ay ma-develop based sa perception ng ibang tao, based on their evaluation and appraisal. Kung ano yung tingin mo sa sarili mo, nakadepende yun sa tingin sa'yo ng ibang tao. Paano nangyari yun? For example, sinabihan ka na, ay, ang galing mo naman sumayaw. And then, you will internalize that and think, ah, okay, magaling rin pala ako sumayaw. That is because of the perception and evaluation of other people to you. That is the concept of looking glass self. Okay? The core idea here is simple. Who we are is shaped by socialization. The people, groups, institutions, and ideas that we are surrounded by. So, according to Charles Cooley, there are steps in looking glass self. So, first, you imagine how you appear to the other person. So, in step one, people first imagine how they appear to others. Okay? So, we, we imagine how we appear to another person. Okay? Ini-imagine natin, ano nga ba ang tingin sa akin ng ibang tao? Second step, you imagine the judgment of the other person. We imagine what judgments that person makes of us based on our appearance and the way we present ourselves. Okay, so judgment naman dito, ini-imagine natin yung judgment ng ibang tao sa atin. So step number three, you feel some sense of pride, happiness, guilt, or shame. We imagine how that person feels about us on the basis of the judgments they've made. For you to deeply understand the concept of the looking glass self, take a look on this slide, okay? So, here is the concept of looking glass self. Imagine having different mirrors, and yung mga salamin na yun, it represents how other people see you. For example, sa my left side, how my mom and dad see me. Ano kaya ang tingin nila sa akin? So, let's say, your parents see you as an angel. Pwede ganun. Okay, next one, how my girlfriend sees me. Pwede ang tingin sa'yo ng girlfriend mo ay loyal and sweet boyfriend. Okay, next one, how my older brother sees me. We can say here that your older brother sees you as a stubborn sibling or matigas ang ulo. Pwede ganun. And last one, how my ex-girlfriend sees me. So, feeling natin dito, okay, Since ex-girlfriend tapos merong sungay dun sa image, maybe we can say that your ex-girlfriend sees you as a bad person. So, lahat ng perceptions ng tao sa'yo, you internalize them, and you create your own description of yourself. Okay? Aside from Cooley, another famous sociologist who contributed in developing an, an understanding of the self was George Herbert Mead. So, his theory... Of the self is completely social. Your self develops through interacting with others. 
through reflecting on that interaction to thinking how others are perceiving you and that helps you generate an image of yourself. Basically, the point of George Mead is that we learn through social experiences. Naniniwala si Mead that the self is created through social interaction. Okay, pakikipag-ugnayan, pakikipag-socialize. Mead theorized that the self has two parts, self-awareness and self-image. Self-awareness involves being aware of the different aspects of yourself your traits, your behavior, and your feelings. Practicing self-awareness is about learning to be better, understand why you feel what you feel, and why you behave in a particular way. Having this awareness gives you the opportunity and freedom to change things about yourself, enabling you to create a life that you want. Next, we have self-image. What do we mean by self-image? Self-image, on the other hand, is a mental picture of yourself, both as a physical body and an individual. A healthy body image means that you see yourself as you really are and that you feel good in your own skin. Okay? So, basically, ang self-image, it's a mental picture of yourself. According to Mead, there are different stages in the development of the self. According to him, the first stage is the preparatory stage. Language develops self by allowing individuals to respond to each other through symbols, gestures, words, and sounds. Ito yung stage na kung saan ginagaya ng bata yung ginagawa ng iba. For example, yung close open kapag ginawa natin to sa harap ng bata, Definitely, gagawin din nila at gagayahin din nila. Okay? Second stage, we have the play stage. This is where children pretend to play the role of a particular or significant other. Usually, yung parents. Okay? So, play develops self by allowing individuals to take on different roles, pretend and express expectation of others. Play develop one's self-consciousness through role-playing. As you recall, siguro nung bata kayo, naglaro kayo nung bahay-bahayan. Kung saan, ikaw ang nanay at siya naman ang tatay. And there, we try to imitate and internalize the roles and pretend to be them. That is included in the play stage. Nagigets ba yung point? Okay, so the third stage is the game stage. Games develop self by allowing individuals to understand and adhere to the rules of the activity. Self is developed by understanding that there are rules in which one must abide in order to win the game or be successful. So, sa game stage, this is where children play organized games and take on the perspective of the generalized other. Ibig sabihin, hindi na lang yung mga taong malapit sa atin. Example of this stage is when we play team games and then we internalize the different roles. Ako taya and then ikaw tatakbo ka, hahabulin kita. Pag nahabol kita, ikaw naman ang... So here, we learn rules and internalize the rules and then we use that. Okay, nagigets? Okay, so we have this term, generalize other. Ano ba yung generalize other? It is the perspective and expectations of a network of others or basically the society. Okay? Yung generalize other na tinutukoy natin, it's the society. Okay? Ano bang ina-expect sa atin ng society? Kapag babae ka, dapat ganito ka. Kapag lalaki ka, dapat ganito ka. And then, anong nangyayari? We internalize those expectations and use it to shape our own behavior. This results to the dual nature of the self. Or the belief that we experience the self as both subject and object, the I and me. Okay? So, ano yung pinagkaiba nila? Yung I... It is spontaneous and unpredictable. Ito yung part mo na kung saan wala kang pakialam sa society. You are only concerned about yourself. On the other hand, you have your me. Yung me naman, it is part of you that's been socialized to think beyond yourself. Hindi na lang sarili mo yung iniisip mo but also the expectations of your society. Okay? So, si me, selfless. Si I, selfish. Okay? Next one, we have Irving Goffman. According to Goffman, we use impression management to present ourselves to others as we hope to be perceived. 
each situation is a new scene and we perform different roles depending on who is present. In his theory of dramaturgical analysis, he argued that people live their lives much like actors performing on a stage. So basically here, what he is trying to say is that people routinely behave like actors on a stage. Everyday social life becomes theatrical. There are roles, scripts, and actions. Yung concept ni Goffman, nakafocus siya sa individuals on taking on their roles and act them out. Kanino at bakit? Inaak natin to sa mga taong nasa paligid natin and he called them as our audience. Bakit? Because we want to give a positive impression to the audience. And he called his concept as dramaturgy. Imagine this, example. You are with your friends and yung mga kaibigan mo mahilig mag-inom because you want to fit in, gusto mo makijive sa kanila, iinom ka rin and syempre, ayaw mo ring magpatalo. Dapat ikaw yung last man or last woman standing, okay? Kasi you want to impress your friends. Another example, pagpasok mo sa school, very active ka because you want to impress your teachers. So we have these different roles na ina-act natin and why do we do that? Because we want to impress other people. So that's the point of Goffman. Naniniwala siya that self is constructed through interaction and he proposed the concept of interaction order. Let me repeat, the interaction order. Ano yung interaction order? It's what we do in the immediate presence of others. Imagine this, nakita mo si crush, anong una mong gagawin? Kikiligin ka ba or na, mahihiya ka at magtatago? Okay? So that is interaction order. Example, um, nakita mo yung kaaway mo. What's the first thing you will do? Sa interaction order, ito yung una nating ginagawa kapag nakita natin yung isang tao. Okay? Nakukuha ba natin? Moving on to the next one, we have here the agents of socialization, the major agents of socialization. So, we have five, okay? Marami to, kaya lang five na lang yung ipapresent ko sa inyo, okay? Yung mga major agents. So, before that, let's define socialization, okay? Socialization is a lifelong process during which we learn about social expectations and how to interact with other people. Nearly all of the behavior that we consider to be human nature is actually learned through socialization. Natututunan natin yan kapag ka nakikipag-interact tayo sa ibang tao. And it is during socialization that we learn how to walk, talk, and feed ourselves about behavioral norms that help us fit into our society and so much more. Socialization occurs throughout our life. But some of the most important socialization occurs in childhood. So let's talk about the most influential agents of socialization. These are the people or groups responsible for our socialization during childhood, including family, school, peers, and mass media. Let's start with the first one, the family. Families introduce children to the expectations of society. Socialization is different based on race, gender, and class. Family is considered to be the most important agent of socialization. Let me repeat, it is the most important agent of socialization. As infants or mga bata pa, di ba, we are completely dependent on others to survive. Okay, so hindi naman natin kayang mag-survive mag-isa, okay, kapag mga baby pa tayo, di ba? Our parents or those who play the parent role are responsible for teaching us to function and care for ourselves. Additionally, they provide us with our first system of values, norms, and beliefs. Next one, we have school. In school, teachers and other students are the source of expectations that encourage children to think and behave in particular ways. So the next important agent of childhood socialization is the school. Of course, the official purpose of school is to transfer subject knowledge and teach life skills such as following directions and meeting deadlines. But students don't just learn from the academic curriculum prepared by teachers and school administrators. In school, natututo rin tayo ng social skills through interactions with teachers, staff, and other students. For example, natututunan natin sa school yung pagsunod sa mga authorities. Okay? 
natututo tayo paano maging tahimik sa loob ng klase, paano mag-antay. Okay? So, basically, natututunan yun sa school. Next one, we have peers. Peer culture is an important source of identity. Through interaction with peers, children learn concepts of self, gain social skills, and form values and attitudes. When you were a 16-year-old, how many times did you complain to your parents? Okay, yung kinocompare mo pa sa iba mong kaibigan, ay bakit si ganito, pwede niyang gawin, ba't si ganito, pumupunta sa ganito, ako ayaw mong payagan. This indicates that our friends or our peers play a very important role in our lives. This is especially true during adolescence when peers influence our tastes in music, clothes, and many other aspects of our lives. We rely on them for fun, for emotional comfort and support, and of course, for companionship. Okay? Next one, we have media. Okay? According to studies, the average young person ages from 8 to 19 spends almost 7 hours per day immersed in media in various forms, often using multiple media forms simultaneously. Television is the dominant medium, although half of all youth use a computer daily. So the mass media are another agent of socialization. Television shows, movies, popular music, magazines, websites, and other aspects of mass media influence our political views, our views of women, people of color, and many other beliefs and practices. Ang media ay kinoconsider din as agent of socialization. And last one, we have religion. Okay, so here, children tend to develop the same religious beliefs as their parents. Very often, those who disavow religion return to their original faith at some point in their life, especially if they have strong ties to their family of origin and after they form families of their own. So, these are the agents of socialization. We have the family, the school, the peers or friends. And we also have media and religion. Take note, these are the major agents of socialization. That ends our lecture for lesson 2, Sociological Perspective of the Self. So thank you so much for listening, my dear students. God bless us all.